G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to apply the method of joints to a fairly challenging truss problem. So in this problem we've been asked to find the internal force in member BC, that's this member just here, using method of joints. And so you'll remember the first step to solving problems like this is you need to analyze the geometry. So let's first view this entire truss as one giant right angle triangle. So this right here is our truss, and it's a right angle triangle just here. And you'll notice that this length is 8 meters, that's given to us. But this length here is 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, which is also 8 meters. And you can tell from trigonometry that this angle then must be equal to 45 degrees, which, meaning that, which means that this angle, BAC, is also equal to 45 degrees. We'll be using that shortly. Now the second part um, for simple truss problems is to analyze the reaction forces from our supports just here, our pin support and our roller support. But you'll find that this will actually be unnecessary, so I'm going to skip this step, right? And bear with me if you don't understand why, hopefully you will shortly. So, the first thing we're going to do, we'll jump down to um, part three, is we're going to now analyze a joint that we choose. And I'm going to choose joint A. I'm going to choose joint A to analyze. Now you might be wondering, why would we choose joint A if we're trying to analyze the force BC? That's because if you were to analyze joint B straight from the beginning, you'll find that there's not enough equations to solve for um, all the forces in these bars just here. So you'll have to start from joint A and work your way up to joint B or joint C. Okay, so let's, let's analyze joint A by making a cut around this joint just here. You'll notice that if this is joint A, We've made a cut out of these bars just here, here, and here. And, of course, our free body diagram shows all external forces, so we've got a 10 kilonewton force here, acting downwards on point A. And we've got a force, which I'm going to assume is in tension, AB, and another force, which I'm going to assume is in tension, AC. Right? And we just found out that this angle was 45 degrees. Okay. Now, with method of joints, we've only got two equations to use. We've got the sum of forces is equal to zero in the x direction, and the sum of forces is equal to zero in the y direction. Let's do the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero first. Well, we'll notice that AC is purely in the x direction. So let's do this. This is going to be AC, just here. Now we'll do the component of AB in the x direction. That's going to be AB times by cosine 45 times by cosine 45. In fact, let me use a different color to really distinguish this out. I'm going to use the color blue. This is going to be AB. And this is going to be AB cosine 45, the horizontal component of it. And that's going to be equal to 0. Okay. Unfortunately, we've got two unknowns in one equation, so we can't solve this yet. Let's go to the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to 0 to see if it can help us out a little bit. Well, we know that there's going to be the 10 kN forces, which is downwards, which is negative by our standard xy axis. So this is going to be minus 10, right? And our component of AB is also in the y direction, so it's going to be plus AB sine 45. Sine 45 is going to be equal to 0. And if you do the maths, you'll figure out that AB is going to be equal to 10 divided by sine 45, which is which is AB is equal to 14.14 kilonewtons. Okay, you can just plug that directly into your calculator. Now you'll, you'll have noticed that because we found AB, that means we can plug this back into our first equation to find AC. So let's do that. We know that AC now is just going to be, let me just write it over here, AC is going to be equal to minus, minus 14 0.14 times by cosine 45. And if you plug that into your calculator, you'll get exactly, exactly 10 kilonewtons, minus 10 kilonewtons. Okay? So, so far so good. We found out that, we found out the internal force in AB and in AC, so we're doing well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to analyze joint B next. Right, because now we've got enough information. We found AB, which means that the only un the only unknown forces at joint B are BD and BC, which we can find using method of joints. 
So now let's do joint B. Well, I'm going to make a cut around here. This is what method of joints is all about. And we'll notice that this is what it looks like. This is point B. This will be our cut sections here, here, and here. Now don't forget we just found out AB. AB is here, right? Let me use different colors. I'm gonna use, um, I'm gonna use this color to represent BD, and I'm going to use, um, I'm gonna use this color to represent BC, the one we're interested in, okay? Well, let's draw our geometries on here as well. We know that because this is 45 degrees, that means that we know that this right here is 45 degrees. Let me draw that on, that's 45 degrees here. And we also know that this right here is also 45 degrees just here, okay? We're gonna be using that shortly. So let's, let's do exactly what we did with the first one. We're going to do the sum of forces in the x direction must be equal to zero, right? So what are, the, what are the forces in the x direction? Well, we've got two. We've got the component of BD. Let's do that one first. It's going to be BD times by cosine 45. And we've got this one, which is going to be negative AB cosine 45. It's negative because its component in the x direction is towards the left, which is negative by our standard xy coordinate system. And that's going to be equal to zero, right? But notice, notice, because we've previously found AB, we can easily plug this back in here to solve for it. So let's just cross off the cosine 45s to make the maths easier. And that means we know that AB is going to be equal to BD, which means that we know that BD is going to be equal to 14.14 kilonewtons, okay? We're not done yet. We found AC, AB, and BD. We're just one step away from finding BC, right? And we do that by using the sum of forces in the y direction is equal to zero. Okay, so what are the forces in the y direction? Well, we've got this, which is going to be BD, BD sine 45, right? We've got this one, which is going to be negative AB sine 45. And we've got BC in its entirety, which is going to be just BC. So it's going to be minus BC, and that's going to be equal to zero. All right, let me just um, shrink this to make some space. Okay, I've just made a little bit of space here. And you'll notice that this equation is actually a funny equation because BD and AB are the same in magnitude, which means that they actually cancel out perfectly. These two things will cancel out perfectly. If you don't believe me, plug them into the calculator and you'll see, which means that BC, BC now mathematically must be equal to zero, right? You can say kilonewtons, so I'll just put kilonewtons here, but you can leave it as zero because in any unit it's gonna be zero. And what's interesting about this is this proves that BC is actually a no force member. Because BC has no internal force in it, it's neither under tension nor is it under compression. So I'm going to put a bracket here and write a no force member. It's neither under compression nor under tension. So that is your answer, guys. That is your answer. BC is actually zero kilonewtons. So just to show you that this type of answer does actually exist. Cheers.